Tillian's Dose incorporates a lot of modern synth pop elements in a dense rock track, and in this clip, Chris goes through each synth track for how he approached the mixing aspect. He makes sure that each layer is heard in the mix without overtaking the entire spectrum. Enjoy. That double bass synth sound. Um, not double bass like metal kick drum, but double bass like an upright bass played with a bow. Um, and there's some low notes in that organ sound. So those are kind of working together to do the bass and the verse. And then I just want to see what this zapper synth, what is this zapper? So we've got some bass synth working with the real bass here too. Another reason that I didn't uh, change the bass tone is because he spent a lot of time um, making sure that this synth bass and the real bass work well together. And that's kind of that's kind of the idea behind this whole song. You hear how cool those two sounds work together. That's kind of is cool on its own. Even the playing style, the way he's sliding, makes it sound like a big synth when it's all put together. So that's kind of the how the bass is all put together in this song. Oh, look, we got that zapper synth in this section too. It's a big part of what's making it sound like I, I remember when Al said he didn't even realize they were guitars. It's because there's so much synth that's blended with the guitar. Yeah, I love it, it. To make it feel like this, uh, like just an instrument, a different kind of instrument. And I love that he focused on how he played that part to make it blend in with the synth, um, both on the synth and how he played the synth and how he played the bass. What's what's this guy? Oh, there's some more. Okay, so that adds to the there's synths everywhere in the song. So I'm gonna be jumping around a lot. So that just adds to that whole synthy section. And there's actually guitars that add to why that sounds like a crazy robot sample. Let's see if I can find those. Oh, maybe those are in the end, actually. Where are you, Zapper? Oh, no. Okay, so what happens is he switches from the stabbing sounds being the synths to the guitar. So I'll get to that later. Um, so let's pair this back. Let's just listen. I think a better way to go about this is to listen to what's going on here instrumentally in the intro section, which is similar to the chorus. There's a lot of rhythm instrumentation happening. You know, the, even the corded parts are really just rhythmic elements. And then the main melody is this synth, which the track was called the Bright Cycle ARP for Arpeggiator. And that's also got a lot of low-end content on it. Again, so for the reason for some of the side chaining and um, is that there's just so much stuff that's got low-end content going on here. And then I'm pulling out, here, let's hear this without any plugins. cool but it's a little stale and the volume kind of jumps up and down a lot so the first thing i did was bump the highs and the mids to get it to cut through all the other stuff like again we'll listen to this is a very thick instrumentation without all that high end eq Pretty much the same volume, but the melody gets completely lost in that part. So I wanted to bring the like buzzy 
um, saw, saw wave sound forward in that synth. So um, I'm boosting some 2K. Um, I'm boosting a little bit of 820 in the mids and some 600 there. And then I also, something I did intentionally, I was talking about earlier how I generally don't like this analog mode on this plugin because it makes things bizarrely wide. Um, that synth was sitting a little mono for me. So I actually turned it on on this part to make this synth sound wider and I'll show you the difference. So that's the digital mode, which is more mono, and then the analog mode. Not a difference that's gonna blow your mind, but it's enough that it opens it up a little more and it's like every little, every little thing adds to how we get width. Another way I'm getting width on this synth is using the wall. Hear how much wider that sounds and how much more in control. So I'm doing the limiting and adding width by unlinking the limiting, which means that it's basically two limiters, one on the left and one on the right, acting on their own. So it's bringing out every little thing on either side at separate times, which makes the synth sound more wide instead of um, instead of just pulling everything down from one side or everything being linked and it being a combination of the two sides which control the volume, which makes things more imaged in the center as to where unlinking the compression or the limiting will always make things sound wider. So I'm purposefully unlinking that. I use the smooth mode here, so there's still a little bit of dynamics on it. If I was doing aggressive, it would just be completely flattened out, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a little bounce in it still. So I'm using the smooth mode, unlinked, and then I took the flavor out because I didn't want to add any extra EQ there. There's, I already had the sound EQ'd the way I wanted. And then, you can see I'm side chaining here. To the kick and the snare again just to give a little more life. And it also creates space for the kick and snare to cut through the mix with all these thick synths and thick instruments. Um, there's gotta be some room for the kick and snare without turning them up ballistically loud. So everything else turns down and it lets you hear the kick and snare, which aren't turning down. Um, which is how I got that synth, which allows me to actually turn up that synth for the moments that you hear it in between the kick and snare hits, which is how I got that synth to cut cut through the density.